All right, folks, and we're back. And before we left you guys to go to break, I was speaking with Michael Parks from Agency Arms, and I left him with a cliffhanger of a question. And so, justify the price to me. I don't to know it. <laughs> so, tell me, tell me. <laughs> Uh, Tell me why I should give you all of my mortgage money, all of my car payment money, all the goods to get me a knock pistol. <laughs> <laughs> well, really what it comes down to is like um, some people could say that higher end guns aren't for the the, the, uh, the beginning shooter or anything like that. And that's not necessarily the case. It's It really comes down to a lot of people can't afford stuff in, in certain ways. And I understand that. But what makes the, the knock so great bang for the buck, no pun intended, is it has all the stuff that we do to all of our stuff. It's RMR ready. It's compliant. It's a sight tracking pistol. It's never been done in the box before, yeah. at least that I know of. Um, so there's a lot of value in that. The the machine uh, workmanship that goes into this, it's five axis machining, which is the most expensive. And then also, since we're making this firearm from from the ground up, uh, we have to pay 11 percent excise tax to the wonderful U.S. government for every single version of the thing. So 11 percent of that three grand. Goes in a check to the feds. Don't get me started on taxes, man, because then I get on that soapbox and I, I just start. <laughs> and, and inevitably I'll end up crying and then it just turns into a, just a horrible thing. <laughs> so when you tell me tax, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but no, I think I think I think for a lot of people, you know, it, it's definitely especially in our in our industry. There um, there's so much required. There's such a requirement for dollar for dollar value. Right. And everything, and for every dollar you charge me, tell me exactly physically why you're charging me this dollar. And um, not that it is a bad thing, but I think what some people miss are those people who actually pay above and beyond a dollar for dollar value from a physical standpoint. And like you said, the added value component to it, um, whether it be just sheer aesthetics, whether it, whether it be knowing that you're going to be one of the limited individuals that have this particular gun, uh, whether or not, or maybe you're just somebody who's that, that in tune with pistols and handguns that you, you, you actually notice the difference in terms of the accuracy because you shoot that well. Um, all of those little things that come together and create a greater sum, I think for some people, it's well worth it. Um, I know I've, I've, I've spent my fair share on certain guns that probably somebody else would look at me and think I was a moron for doing. <laughs> but, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day, though. It was, it's, look, this is the way the gun makes me feel. This is the way this item made me feel. I choose to buy it. This is the value I placed in it. Therefore, I'm going to buy it. Um, so I kind of—it was a loaded question, but <laughs> you, 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 you worked your way through it. You worked your way through it. <laughs> now, um, I want to kind of talk about just the Glock custom Glock industry as a whole, right? Because it's, it's 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 pretty much its own thing now, um, yeah. and, and it's it's massive, you know. And I, just flat out, what what do you what do you feel is the current state of the custom Glock world? Well, you know, the way I view it is there's plenty of room at the table. Um, if you look at, like, for instance, cars, Ford and Chevy, if they weren't around, they wouldn't be pushing innovation. They wouldn't be pushing the cost down, um, keeping the prices from going astronomical. Yeah. You know, we view um, other companies in the same arena as us as hey, there's no animosity. You know, the, the companies out there, like, that are doing all the different framework, for instance. You know, SSBI we actually collaborate with, and he does his own trigger and slide work, too. Um, you know, we use numerous different uh, um, Cerakote shops. Um, when it comes to other trigger builders, other gun manufacturers, Zev, Salient, uh, the small guys out there uh, that do it, it's all great because more competition drives innovation, which is going to make new product and it'll be better for the consumer and also keeps the price down because if there's only one person out there and they start getting a little, their head gets too big yeah. and those prices start going prices up. Prices start going up, yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So you don't think in any way that the, the custom Glock market is oversaturated? No, I mean, eventually it might be. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like for the rifle world, I mean, oh, my God, how many guys are making rifles nowadays? Yeah. And, and and how many guys are making accessories for rifles? And the innovation for the need to just make something new um, that isn't so innovative. Yeah. And I don't think we're there yet. Um, it might get there eventually, but uh, I think we're in a nice sweet spot right now, personally. Yeah, I, you know, I'd have to agree with you on that. Um, I do believe the rifle market is incredibly saturated right now. Um, and it's only a negative thing, at least I can see. You can tell me if you agree with me or not. It's only a negative in that it's hard to decipher quality now. Where, where, what, what's a true quality rifle versus just your kind of, I threw, I threw a bunch of parts together um, in my apartment complex and then started selling rifles kind of quality, right? Um, I think I might start doing that tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So coming near to you, noir rifle, thrown together in my kitchen table. Um, <laughs> but from, from that standpoint, is, is 
do you think from a creative standpoint in the gun industry that we might be limiting ourselves in, in some way by over-focusing on the blank canvas, blank canvas of a Glock and not putting a lot of more of that creative effort into kind of building guns from the ground up like you guys are doing with the knot? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, I think that's a that's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, in regard to, you know, you you are limited. For instance, when we work on a Glock slide, um, the way that Glock cuts their slides mm -hmm. limits our ability to do certain things. Um, so yes, in, in some ways, absolutely. Uh, but in other ways, um, if you look at a company like us, we're, we're brand new. You know, my business partner is a an engineer and machinist, and I'm just a grubby street cop. Yeah. You know, so we didn't have bankrolls to throw in there to start this massive yeah. monster company like a uh, Smith and Wesson or Glock and and come up with something from the ground up because molding is a couple hundred grand to get a good mold just for the frame and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yes, it'd be amazing if we can make an agency pistol from the trigger bar to the mag to every piece from the ground up. It's just uh, it's just a monstrous expense. Yeah, but you know, we're doing the best of what we can. So, like, so I've noticed. The marketing component. What what drives the marketing language from you guys? Because you know, you know, like it's it, you created kind of almost this brotherhood since whenever you buy a gun from you guys. Like, ah, oh, there we go, right there. <laughs> so talk to me, talk to uh, talk to me through that in terms of what what motivated that idea. Well, um, yeah, this is one thing that too that Randy and I were, were kind of giggling about um, is nobody's really given the uh, the shooting community a sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I'm a video game geek, and so playing my Call of Duty on my no friendo and everything at home, <laughs> and, you know, you, you get these unlocks and you get your tags and all this kind of cool stuff, yeah. and it, it kind of makes you feel like you're you're, you're um, invested in it, you know, because you put so much time into it, or in this case, uh, monetary investment. Um, so I wanted. And Randy, you know, marketing is more my side, and, and Randy's our manufacturing side. So Randy and I got our heads together. We said, well, hey, if we do this agency thing and kind of go with the secret spy thing, because it's been around forever. I mean, yeah. 007 is still making movies, the Jason Bourne. I mean, it's like kind of the old spy theme. And uh, we're working on some more ways that you'll be seeing over the next year or so to mm -hmm. really just bring in our customers even more into the brotherhood by giving them some more involvement. But give them the ability to feel like they're part of something and not just buying a piece of steel to go play with, I think is, is something that this community, uh, the two way community has really been lacking just because, you know, it's just always been just, I bought this gun. It's really cool. I can yeah. play with it. But now they feel a part of something. It makes them, you know, feel a lot more involved and, and dedicated to the brand. And gotcha. so that's the kind of thing we're going for. Yeah. My, uh, my camera guy for a lot of my gun review videos, he's obsessed with you all. I'm kind of sick and hearing about you all, to be honest. Um, cause you know, we'll be out there filming all day long and he'll, he'll come out and he's like, man, have you seen this? I'm like, all right, dude, leave me alone. But, <laughs> but um, so I, I have to ask if from a business standpoint, um, we are, you know, we're what, eight days away from the elections. Um, so, I, so I have to ask, where, where do you see, how do you see a Hillary election, like if Hillary won, how, how do you see that affecting you guys' business? Well, um, hmm. The, the part that would be really tough is how she wants to make the firearm manufacturer responsible for the usage of, of the pistol yeah. uh, or weapon, say. And, uh, you know, that could be catastrophic in some ways. But, I mean, that's why we pay <laughs> an ungodly amount of money in insurance every year. <laughs> and, uh, they cover us with things like that. Um, I think if she's elected, it's going to be uh, – it's going to make things a lot more costly uh, yeah. for us. Um, it definitely won't be good for business in regard to the cost of doing business. Um, but you know, sure we'll sell a lot more guns, but <laughs> and that, see, that's the weird thing is because you know you'll talk to some people, you know, especially people outside of the industry, and they're like, "Oh man, you should want to vote for Hillary. She's gonna she's gonna help the gun prices skyrocket. You're gonna sell tons of guns." I don't think they really talk like that, but you know, yeah. um, <laughs> so it's it's interesting to hear a different angle from the standpoint that people underestimate the cost of doing the business. So yeah. it almost it, it, even if you guys did sell a ton of guns, it almost washes itself out or actually makes it worse. Because the cost goes up so high, especially when we start talking about um, the potential for suit. You know, mm -hmm. fighting a lawsuit isn't cheap, you know, know. especially with the, with the broad umbrella of reasons why somebody can now come and sue you guys if Hillary gets her way. Um, and I think a lot of people don't put a lot of stock in that. Now, how do you see things happening from a Donald Trump presidency? Well, from what I understand, um, and I'm not as versed, sadly, because I've been very busy, but uh -huh. it is in his uh, tax policy as it should be. Uh, but it appears that his interest in American business and 
keeping the jobs here um, is going to impact us positively. Uh, we're hoping that some of the, the tax breaks that he's talked about offering can assist us in hopefully um, expanding operations and, and potentially lowering cost point down the road, um, you know, by by lowering our internal costs. But, um, you know, I don't know exactly every intricacy of his yeah. of his tax policy and reform that he wants to do, but it seems at a cursory level to be a, a much better way for us to be. And he's a huge 2A supporter. So, yeah. I mean, he's getting my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I think from a um, going back to Hillary really quickly, I think also from a tax perspective that that's really going to hurt you guys. Just listening to some of her her proposals from, you know, from an increasing tax standpoint. Um, so, yeah, definitely no to Hillary in that regard. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, uh, so uh, and this may, this may be a question of redundancy, but in your mind, what do you think? set you up like we already talked about the fact that we, we don't necessarily think the market is oversaturated right we're kind of in this kind of golden era of uh, custom clock manufacturing um what do you think separates you all as a company from all the other companies out there i don't necessarily mean makes you better but just kind of separates you in that regard yeah what makes us different is you know we, again we do try and, and give our customer that sense of uh, ownership and sense of community in it so like with every gun it comes with an agent card you know, uh, when you call into the shop, the first person you talk to is my mom. So when you call and talk to Barbara, you're talking to my mom. Yeah. And, you know, she treats them like she would treat anybody that would call. She treats them like she would treat me. And our two sales guys, um, Yuselin and uh, Phil, they it's all about customer service. We want the customer to feel like every experience is as positive as humanly possible. Even if they had an issue where, hey, you know, something isn't built the way I wanted it. We'll bend over backwards to make sure that we can get everything done the right way. Gotcha. Um, and I always hear the biggest feedback that we get is, hey, customer service has always been lacking. Here you guys come in. You actually answer the phone. You've got a website that works functionality-wise, and I can order my stuff online. And it just it kind of we're, – we're really focused on that to make sure that the customer is happy. Um, we don't ever get into the, uh, the fight of throwing mud at other yeah. companies. Um, you know, again, like I said before, we, we work well with others. Gotcha. Uh, and then also with what you get with our guns, it's – for instance, they're all armor compatible. They come with the battle plates, uh, all the framework. We do a lot of mods on the frames that go beyond what a lot of companies do, and they charge the same cost or sometimes more than what we charge. Um, so we try to put as much added value as we could into the Fissel at a price point that still makes it good enough for us. Um, for instance, you know, like our largest dealers, like Reactive Gunworks, for instance, mm -hmm. um, uh, we're able to give him a decent price to where he buys enough to where it makes business part, uh, sense for him. I mean, we're doing right now gotcha. guns a month just for Reactive. And uh, if our price point wasn't what it was, he wouldn't be able to do that. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, I want to thank you for joining me and talking to me about you guys' new product, the Knock. I look forward to getting my hands on one, shoot one at some point. I don't know, maybe this year, next year, three years from now, who knows? But, uh, <laughs> but no, from what I've seen, man, it's 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 a really good looking pistol. Um, I'm pretty sure it shoots excellent. And thank you very much for joining me here today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate right. it. You have a good one, Mike. Yeah. All right. Uh, and when we come back, I'm going to get on my soapbox about something.